Hi there! Back again here with me, Rati, in Mami Beluga Investing. This video is a part of Singapore Straight Times Index, where I discuss STI constituents. Today, I'm discussing Yardin Matheson Holdings Limited with stock symbol J36. My quick take for this company are, the company is old and huge and expensive. So how did I come up with this conclusion? Stay tuned. Okay, don't forget to subscribe to get more of the same kind of contents. Disclaimer, this is an amateur video. My main intention is to record my own journey, learning and practicing investing from scratch. This video shouldn't replace any financial advice and neither suggestion to take position, buy or sell in the stock market. Please conduct your own research before making any decision. Feel free to put your comments, criticism and suggestions in the comment section below. And now let's have a quick look at the company's profile. According to its website, Jardin Medicine was founded in Canton, China in 1832 by Scots William Jardin and James Medicine. Then in 1844, the company moved its main office to Hong Kong and opened more offices in different cities in China. Fast forward to the 20th century, in 1906, JM and Co became a limited company. By then, the company had been involved in various trades as well as transportation, be it railway or ship. Later on, the company formed subsidiaries such as E. Wo Cotton Miles and Jardin Engineering Company. After closing down its offices in Hong Kong and China during the Second World War, in 1947, the company resumed its operation in Shanghai and Hong Kong. Then, in 1950s, in the 50s, the company closed down its office in China and then moved to Hong Kong. In 1961, JM Co became a public company. Then two years later, in 1962, began its operation in Australia. Then in the 70s, the company made more move into the hospitality sectors, insurance and automotive. By then, it had presence in UK, US, South Korea, the Philippines, Indonesia, and Australia, besides Hong Kong. In 1984, Jardin Medicine Holdings Limited, or JMH, was formed as the group's holding company, incorporated in Bermuda. In 1991, Jardin Medicine was listed on SGX main board. Jardin Medicine 2020 annual report listed Hong Kong land, which is a property investment, management and development as the major contributor of its underlying profit. This company has more than 850,000 square meters of prime office and retail space in Hong Kong, Singapore, Beijing, Jakarta and other major Asian cities. In terms of sector, the major contributor of its underlying profit based on its 2020 annual report is property sector as expected. While with regard to geographical area, the main contributor is China. In terms of ownership, unfortunately, I'm unable to find the ownership structure listed anywhere in the annual report nor their official website. Uh, so what I have here is only a list of its minority institution shareholder. Okay, so yeah, that was a brief look at the company's uh, profile. Now let's look at its performance. So here I plotted Jardin Medicine earning per share for the last 14 years. I also added a horizontal green dash line as a guide to zero level. Earning below this line indicates that the company is recording a loss for that particular year. Okay, so now let's look at what's going on with Jardin Medicine EPS. At a glance, we see that it never recorded a loss until 2020. It has seen earning volatility over the last 14 years, but it was never lost. There are four notable drop in earnings. They are in 2008, 2012, 2018, and finally 2020. The 2008 annual report reported the earnings in that particular year were affected by the global economic downturn yeah, and worsening financial markets, especially at the last quarter of 2008. As I recall as well, this is coincide with the US subprime mortgage collapse. 
The company also put a note that this drop is contributed by a significantly lower revaluation of its property investments. It was down from slightly more than 1 billion US dollars in 2007 to about 200 million US dollars in 2008. So it was an 80% drop in property's portfolio value. It seems to me that this property loss is just a loss on paper. Since 2008, its earnings have been significantly climbing, following the trend from previous year, until it dropped again in 2012. The 2012 annual report mentioned that the company's earnings were impacted by dairy farms' one-off charge in their Malaysia's operation. I'm not sure what that is, but the closest clue that I have is uh, said that effect effect of the reversed supplier income that incorrectly recognized in prior years i don't know what that actually means okay then another contribution to lower earnings was jardine motors 71 percent sales drop in mainland china and finally the biggest contributor is the depreciation of indonesian rupiah exchange rate that result in astra's contribution to be four times smaller. Since 2012, GM's earnings have been steadily recovered. It increased significantly from 2014 till it reached a record high in 2017. Most of Jardine Madison business were doing well in 2017, except Dairy Farm, which recognized a 64 US dollar, 64 million US dollar loss. In 2018, GM's earnings were clipped again to 2014 level. The same year, GM made 150 million US dollar investment in Gojek, possibly to pursue future growth. GM's earnings dropped in that year might be related to its investment spending. Now 2020. GM recorded a loss, as we can see on the screen. 2020 is a special and challenging year where the COVID-19 ongoing pandemic has affected everyone worldwide. The drop in its earnings in 2020 mostly contributed by Astra, JCC's as, uh, and hotels lower earnings. Uh, GM reported dairy farms Jardine Pacific and Jardine Motors receive government supports. Okay, so that's a brief look at the company's performance for the past 14, 16 years. Now let's take a look at the dividends for the past 16 years. To see the sensibility of dividend payout, so here I plotted three layers of information. The first one is the dividend payout over the last 11 years, which are plotted as red round markets connected by a thick red line, as we can see on the screen. On each of the points, I have annotated with two numbers. The number above, the markers, are the dividend payout in US dollars, and the ones below are the payout ratios to the respective year's earning per share. As a comparison to the earnings, here I plotted back the earnings per share as a thinner line with the same color. At a glance, we can see that GM pays a very stable dividend regardless of its earnings. It seems that we can count on about at least $1 per share dividend per year. Even with the loss recorded in 2020, GM Board of Director still, recommend, still recommended dividend payout. The reason given was maintaining the dividend demonstrate the board confidence in the long-term strength of the group's underlying business. Okay, if I'm one of GM's shareholder, I have uh, mixed feelings about dividend during receiving dividend during loss period. On the positive side, I'm happy to receive income during a bad year. Additionally, uh, it might also help to prevent the stock price from plunging as it might attract dividend hunter, which with the yield uh, much better than fixed deposit. It sure is an attractive offer, but that is just my opinion. Okay, on the negative side, it may not be a sustainable practice as the company may be deprived of cash that it needs to survive. 
Furthermore, paying out dividend while receiving government handout might arise some ethical concern. Okay, so that's a summary of GM's dividend payout. Now let's take a look at how the market values GM. JM, sorry, JM. To see the market valuation of Jardine Matheson, here I plotted four layers of information, which are first the price, which represents market valuation of the company. It is also the easiest information that I can obtain. I can use the search term Jardine Matheson and it will pop with this graph. But price alone sometimes mislead, misleading for the value of the company and its prospect. So I'll include some fundamental indicators to help me to decide. The second layer of information is its 10 times earning multiply, which here I plotted as a dashed green line. 10 times earning multiply can be considered as the price where the price to earning, that is the PE ratio, is 10. For me, I consider 10 times earning multiply has two purposes. First, it indicates the price where I expect where I have higher chance to break even within 10 years. You could plot 5 times earning multiply if your investment horizon is 5 years. Second, as a consequence for the first reason, I'll consider share price above 10 times earning multiply to be expensive. The third layer of information is 15 times earning multiply. With the same principle as a 10 times earning multiply, price above this indicator will be deemed as expensive. Here I plotted the 15 times earning multiply as dashed yellow line, just like the traffic light. I'll start feeling nervous if the price crosses this line, particularly for non-growth company. The fourth layer of information is the 20 times earning multiply. Here I plotted as a dashed red line. I would consider the share price to be super expensive if it ever crossed this line. For non-growth company, I consider to cut down my position if this happened. Okay, so now let's see what's going on with Jardine Matheson share price. Okay, looking at the fundamental indicator, most of the time the price followed the general trend of the 10 times earning multiply. Earnings spikes from 2010 to 2012 as well as 2018 didn't generate a buying frenzy. The opposite seems to be true as well. When JM earnings dropped in 2020, it didn't generate massive sell-off. It might also be cushioned by the 2020 dividend payout. It seems that the market either fairly valued JM or market doesn't expect the company to have a massive future growth. Now the trouble for me is uh, it is rather tricky to me for me to put my reasonable price for its fundamental indicator since it recorded a loss in 2020. From the fundamental indicator, the company is worthless, means the reasonable price is zero. But that doesn't make any practical sense. So if I take a few years back, conservatively, I will place a reasonable price at 46 US dollars per share. At that price level, it will provide sufficient cushion for a market dive as well as sufficient potential of upswing, assuming the business recover post-pandemic. As of 9th of June, when this video is prepared, Jardin Medicine stock price is at 63.93 US dollar per share. Okay, so in conclusion, first, the company old and huge. It is old and huge and expensive. Looking at its history, how big it is and its presence in the various sectors and geographical location in Southeast Asia is huge. Yeah, but it's also expensive. Okay, the company is a slow growth phase, even though it has been expanding and diversifying. But by no means, it will always be like this, considering how aggressive the group and its subsidiaries in doing acquisition and making other business moves. Okay, three, currently it is expensive, as what I mentioned before, considering its earning and it also beyond my cash capabilities. So I am not interested in making any position. 
Okay, that's all for today. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to put uh, comments and leave comments and please subscribe to my channel because it means a lot for me. Okay, that's all and bye.